hey folks, welcome back to our short course on the Book of Common Prayer, filming this one from home as well, like the last one. Uh, but this is our fourth gathering. Um, our last one, remember, was about some of the historical details, the development of the um, formation of the prayer book tradition, particularly the daily office. Um, and I'll not touch into that in this one, but uh, in this course, I'd like to elaborate on some of the other resources within the Book of Common Prayer that you can use at home with your families or alone or however you'd like to use them. But I do realize that um, for some, the, the daily office is actually kind of a challenge. It's hard to find time to do morning and evening prayer, and they can feel a little bit elaborate. I hope that I simplified those for you, uh, though. Um, so I'd like to talk about three um, different prayer resources within the Book of Common Prayer that I think you'll find really valuable. The first one I'm going to talk about is uh, the addition of Noonday Prayer and Compline to the sort of daily office movement. The second one is the Devotions for Individuals and Families, which is in the prayer book. It's sort of shorter um, liturgies for prayer together. And then the last one is a little different. It's, it's called the Great Litany. And it is not really like these other two that I've just listed. Um, it's one of the, the first prayers that Cranmer wrote for the prayer book. And it um, is a little more, it would take some creativity to use at home. Um, but I am bringing it up because I just think it is so immensely valuable, and so precious to the prayer book tradition. So I just want to toss it out there and I'll talk more about it in a minute. But just to sort of recoup last week, remember I talked about how the daily office was really the development or the simplification rather of Benedictine hours of, of prayer into really two. So Thomas Cranmer, the guy who put the prayer book together in the 16th century, his brilliant insight and development was to take what was a fairly complex monastic tradition and to distill it into something simple enough for a whole country to do, morning prayer and evening prayer. And then, of course, the sequence of those lectionary readings uh, so that they could move through all of the scriptures together. But I think for many of us now, um, those two uh, sequences of prayer can still be actually kind of a lot. So um, here are some other options. And they're also in the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, the first one that I'd like to talk about is this edition of Noonday Prayer in Compline. And there are a couple ways you can use this. First off, to back up, Noonday Prayer and Compline are really sort of just like morning and evening prayer, but they're just additions. So you have an office, time to pray, during the noonday now, and then at Compline, which is at the very end of the day. So you could theoretically do morning prayer, noonday prayer, evening prayer, and then Compline. Now, you don't need to do that. I mean, the, the other option you can do is just do noonday prayer. And we've been doing that for y'all uh, on our YouTube channel, which you can check out. Or you can just do Compline, which is an evening service. And that's a beautiful service, great to do, you know, right before bedtime. And you can find those again in the daily office section of your Book of Common Prayer, which is at the very beginning. Remember, always use the uh, table of contents. Very useful. So there's, there's that option. Um, now, like the daily office tradition, noonday prayer and Compline have the, the basic sort of focal point is scripture. So there's a scripture reading in the middle of each of those. And uh, the Book of Common Prayer offers you some suggestions. But the other thing you could do is you could um, integrate that uh, into the pre-existing lectionary plan. So the readings that are already available for the daily office, you can put those into the noonday prayer and Compline liturgies, it's whatever works best for you. Um, but those are valuable. And I mean, it does offer you a way to move through if you want uh, to add to the, your sort of liturgical pattern of the day. And you could make it so that you could theoretically have all of your readings correspond to each of those four times of prayer. You could do morning prayer, you could have the Psalms, noonday prayer, you could have an epistle, uh, evening prayer, you could do gospel, and then for Compline, you could have the uh, Old Testament reading or whatever you want to do. Um, so that's that's one option. You can do that. And I want you to see these two additions really as valuable additions. Um, you can do them on their, their own, 
or you can add them into the daily office sequence, whatever works for you. Remember, these are resources for your own spiritual benefit. Now, the, the second option, again, for those of you who feel like, gosh, the daily office is actually kind of a lot. Like it, for me, it usually takes mm, between 15 and 23 minutes or so. Um, I know that's a little exact, but because of timed it a number of times. Um, so it is something of a time commitment. It's hard to do under 15 minutes. And if you don't have that amount of time, the, the Book of Common Prayer has these other resources for you. They're uh, called um, Daily Devotions for Individuals and Families. Again, the interesting thing about those is they're also in the very beginning uh, daily office section of the Book of Common Prayer, which you can find in the Table of Contents. So check those out. They are divided into four. So you have morning daily devotions for evenings for um, for individuals and families. You have noonday ones. You have early evening, like you know, to do right before dinner or whatever. And then you have nighttime ones, sort of function as Compline. So really, these are just a pattern of of what already exists in the daily office tradition: morning and evening prayer plus noonday plus Compline. Um, and you can just sub those in. I mean, they're, they're very, very simple. And they follow the basic pattern of the daily office, but they're just easier and shorter. So you'll have a psalm, you'll have some scripture reading, you'll have a prayer, including the Lord's Prayer, and then you have a collect to, to end it. And those are really wonderful. Sometimes we'll do the early evening prayer uh, right before dinner. It's great. Now, the last thing that I'll jump into is the Great Litany. Uh, the Great Litany was um, written by Thomas Cranmer in the 16th century, and it was one of the first things that he wrote. Henry VIII commissioned him to write this prayer, and it's really kind of a, a jewel of the prayer book tradition. Uh, it is, a litany is just a list, so it's a sequence of pleas to the Lord for all kinds of things, for health and for... Um, for being spared from disease, for all, all of these, you know, travails that happen in normal life. And the reason I bring that up right now is because I think it is so uh, valuable for us to return to the basic idea that our lives are entirely in God's hands. And this is something that Christians coming out of the medieval world and all the way into the Reformation, that they just knew really well. They knew that all of their livelihood is completely in the hands of the Lord. Their health, their well-being, their jobs, all of it was in the Lord's hands. And so they knew how to call out to the Lord very well. And that's what this prayer is. It's long, it's a pretty lengthy sequence, but it is so valuable, I think, for us to place ourselves in a posture where we ask the Lord for what we need. We ask him for our daily bread. So I, I offer that to y'all not as um, <laughs> a, an extremely accessible way of, of entering into prayer, but as an extremely necessary way of entering into prayer. In times like this, the COVID outbreak, we need to turn to the Lord, recognizing that we're finite, that he holds us, that he loves us, that he's made us fearfully and wonderfully, and that all of our lives are in his hands. So I offer that to you. It's also obviously in the table of contents. You can find it. And it's just a suggestion. You you can pray it uh, in the mornings. You can add it to your daily office prayer time if that works well for you. Um, shoot, you could in integrate it into prayer time before meals. Um, of course, if you will remember, we often use this at St. George's and uh, our liturgies on holy days, particularly in Lent. Um, but I just want to suggest that as a resource for, for y'all to, to sort of cultivate a posture of open-handed, eager um, requests to the Lord. So uh, those are some alternatives. Again, just to remind, recap, Noonday Prayer and Compline, those are two options for you. If those times work better for you than morning and evening. Uh, second, the devotions for individuals and families really valuable for people who are like maybe homeschooling their kids and have a bunch of jobs and they're just don't have time for something that takes at least 15 minutes. That's a great option. And then finally, the great litany. That is the prayer you turn to when stuff gets hard. And uh, I hope that you learn to love these prayers 
like I do. I um, hope that you learn to use these prayers to really fuel and instill um, your prayer life with the Lord. And more than anything, we just hope that you draw closer to the Lord in prayer during this time. Uh, the Lord loves you, and he loves it when we draw close to him. So that's it for this session. I uh, hope to see you all again soon. Thanks.